Hey, this is Alex Botmish from Rising. Today we're going to make a 3D printed interactive dragon to watch the Game of Thrones, depending on what happens during the show. But the color of the eyes go from red and blue. Starting out, the eyes are red. However, if something unfortunate happens, hint, the eyes will turn blue. In this project, we're going to need a 3D printer to print the dragon. The model can be downloaded from Thingverse. Uh, just check out the description of this video for the details and the link. The creator did a very fantastic job creating this model. It's very detailed. You can see the scales. You can see the spikes. And the whole model just, just looks really awesome. And I, I really like the way he posed it too. At 100% scale, it fits in the palm of your hand. But for this project, we increased the, the scale to 150% so that we can make room to insert some wires and LED lights. Once the parts are printed, you can use a screwdriver to gently pull apart the support uh, to start, and then using your hands, you can, you can pull up the, the rest of it. So we're going to modify the model with LED lights. One of the things we need to do first is we're going to need to drill holes into the eyes, and then through the body, and then out the body, and then into the tail, and come out the tail again. And what you should do when you're doing this, you definitely want to wear safety glasses, um, use clamps and gloves. Always wear protection so that um, you don't give yourself hurt. So next, we're going to solder wires individually to each of the LEDs. Initially, you're going to need to cut down the leads and try to remember which leads are which. Uh, one like sort of blue, the other ones for red, and then the middle one is pretty easy to guess. That's going to be your common. And don't forget to use a fan when you're soldering so that you're not bringing in the fumes and use plenty of ventilation. All right, so now, now that the, the soldering job is done, we're gonna run each wire down individual, individually through each eye. So you can see, you just kind of put it through the eye and then gently just kind of slowly fish it out through the, the end of the neck. Then, once both, both uh, wires are through the body, what we're going to do is we're going to solder it together to a third wire to join it to make it as one single wire. So that way you, you don't have to wire two separate uh, LED wires. You just wire it to one, one, um, to one output and it'll power both lights on at the same time. So you definitely want to just double check your wiring. Uh, use a battery, test it out, make sure that your wiring is correct, that when you apply power, the lights are coming on to exactly the same color as you want. So the eyes does look a little bit weird, uh, a little bit bad after the drilling, uh, because you need to make a, plenty of room to insert the, the wires and, of course, a, a room for the LEDs. So afterwards, what we can do is we can save some of the shavings from your drilling process, and we can sprinkle a little bit into the eyes. And then we're going to take a solder iron, crank it down the temperature a little bit so that it's not so hot. Because uh, you don't want to just come uh, straight up just start burning this thing. You, what you really want is just to melt it. And and so, so what you want to do is just gently use the solder iron, gently mend the, um, the shaving sprinkles and until it just melts right into the eye socket and be careful not to touch the LED light because you don't want to damage the lights because you spent a lot of time doing this. Next, um, on the remaining parts, we have a lot of rough edges from the 3D printing. Um, so to make the gluing process a little easier, we need to smooth out the, the rough edges on the side so that when we put the two pieces together, it will be nice and smooth. And then on top of that, so, so what you can use is sandpaper or a Dremel that has a little bit of the abrasive and you can just quickly um, clean up the edges here. And then after that, we're going to also need to gently rough up the smooth edges so that you give the glue a little bit more room to, to catch on. Um, so that the glue has a little bit more, more area and more uh, surfaces to grab on. Because if it's too smooth, it's hard to for the glue to, for something to stick to. Uh, gently grind a little bit of the, uh, the edges here, and also at the same time rough it out.
Okay. So now, uh, I already did the wiring for this guy. So what I'm going to do is then run it through the main body. And I'll run through the tail, which already has a hole pre-drilled through it. So i got a hole going through here. And it's going to go through the tail end of the main body. It's going to come out the head. And it's going to connect to the head. So, I already got the wires. Let's take pick take off this wire here. Let's use a little bit of tape. So where did that wire go? Let's go ahead and tape this up a little bit. Gotta run it through the main body. through the tail. Hopefully it goes through one shot. Oh, looks like I'm going to get a bigger hole. this section up so that the leads don't touch each other in case you're wondering why there's two different color wires going to each other um, I kind of crossed the uh, soldering wires so that's why black goes to red and red goes to black because I got the eyes backwards and the uh, alternating in the head. Okay, so now we can feed this through. Alright, look at that. Looks pretty cool, huh? And where did my tail go? Get my tail. Pulling these wires out. So with the wires all, all set and ready, we are now ready to glue the body to the rest of the parts. So be sure to give plenty of glue because you want to do this on the first shot. That way you're not going back and forth. So the glue is not going to glue quite quite quickly. So what we want to do is um, we're going to apply plenty of glue. And then let's, let's go ahead and close it up. And now what's funny is that reading the label, Superglue claims 15 seconds to cure. And of course they said and plus maybe an unknown number. So in our case, we found out it's actually the unknown number. It's going to take minutes for this thing to cure. It does not cure in 15 seconds. So I'm going to speed up this process a little bit in the video. And so that we're not waiting an hour for me to cure, hold up all these pieces. Let's see, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Okay, so now that once all the parts are glued, uh, there still seems to be a little bit of a gap or some seams where it was joined. And what we're going to do is the same trick that we did to fix up the eye. So we're going to use our soldering iron again. And like I said, make sure your temperature is not set to such a high thing where you're, you're burning the plastic and fumes are coming out. So don't forget to use a vent ventilation and a fan to blow away the fumes so that you're not breathing in this harmful plastic. So what you want to do is gently use the solder iron to, to kind of just gently mold on top of it. And then you can kind of start to push around the, the plastic on top of the wing and then just basically just gently 
melt the, the, the seam together. And then for the larger gaps, we can do the same trick again. Sprinkle some of the plastic shavings from the earlier drilling process. And then just kind of fill in the large gaps and then just kind of just melt that in together. And then just kind of work your way kind of like a, a gentle paint brushing system. Okay, so the next part is we're going to start painting. So the paint process is actually very easy. I actually just mix um, a bright red paint, acrylic paint, with a uh, black acrylic paint. And if you just mix a, a small dab of black and red, you get this kind of this really uh, dark red color, and, that, and that's kind of what I used. And you didn't really need to have any other colors. For me, I just kind of just let the brush do the blending, starting from where the webbing is at the end. And then just kind of let let it, let the brush naturally run out of the paint into more towards the center of his body, and then that way give it a, a pretty natural uh, blended look. Uh, when I was comparing this to the actual uh, images from from the HBO show Game of Thrones, uh, the dragon in this case is actually Drogon for for this model, and. And it just kind of fades, and he kind of has a little bit of a, a, a scruffy webbing color look. And so it's a little bit weird. He's not, it's not like a perfect color. So that kind of works to our advantage here. So what you want to do is just start with a bright red on the edge of the webbing, and then just let it slowly just run out of paint as you get more towards the center of his arm. Okay, so now with everything ready, we're going to wire up to the Raspberry Pi. So I put the Raspberry Pi inside, and we got the USB micro USB adapter, a audio adapter which plugs into the micro USB adapter. And we have a microphone which plugs in. Got the two eyes in the front that changes colors. The final model, kind of painted, it actually looks really nice. You know, the wings and all that stuff. And connected to it is the wires, which is just coming out of the tail. And then it's connected to inside to my box and the microphone here. Inside my box, if I can get it open. Initially, what the, how this works is that the microphone is listening in for keywords, and I only set it up for uh, two words uh, just to keep it to keep this project simple. The word white. So just like when they're going to say White Walker or the, or whatever you know, like Snow White or something. Um. So that will turn the dragon's eyes to blue because we're going to assume, oh man, if they're talking about white walkers, then there's probably going to be these, you know, the undead zombies are coming. So he's gonna, his eyes are going to turn blue. And then the other keyword that it's listening for is the word fire. I'm still kind of playing around with what type of word to use this, but I think fire, I guess, will be the good choice. Um, I'm welcome to, if you guys want to post some ideas of what kind of words you guys are going to use to see what's what would be more entertaining as, as we're watching the show together. Um, and a little bit of a disclaimer. So I'm using the, the Google speech to text um, a API and it doesn't quite catch everything very cleanly. So it does take a, a little bit. Um, some processes you can be screaming at it, you know, you're saying white here and then fire there and it doesn't catch it. You got to say a couple times before it finally recognizes you said the word white and not some other word that interpreted it. And then it's going to turn your colors. So, so I'm also listening to some ideas. Um, hopefully you, um, so I'm looking to you as a viewer to see if you have any uh, ideas that if there's any other open libraries for speech to text that works a lot better than Google. I'm definitely open for it because um, it's, it's, it's really frustrating to see that, you know, you know you're, you're trying to say a word, but then Google is not translating it well we're not catching it on time so um, I'm, I'm open to see if there's anybody out there that knows 
that there's a better uh, speech to text recognition that runs on Python. So you guys can find all this material in the in the description. Um, I'm gonna have a Hacksters.io website uh, posting of this site, and then I also have a blog if you want to check out my future projects. Be sure to check out my uh, YouTube page for the link to the blog, and you can see my um, my my next upcoming projects. And be sure to subscribe and follow along. So thanks for watching.